Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing my May reading wrap up. Let's just jump into the books. So the first thing that I read in May was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a reread in preparation for reading the final book in this trilogy. So The Bear and the Nightingale is fairy tale inspired, like Russian, Slavic fairy tale inspired. It's about a young girl named Vasilisa who still practices the old ways the sort of folk pagan beliefs and the crumbling of those ways as Christianity comes in and squashes a lot of these pagan beliefs. And it's just a very fun, cozy fantasy read. And I wanted to reread this and its sequel, The Girl in the Tower, before moving on to Winter of the Witch, which is on my 21 to read in 2021 list. The first book on this list was a delight to reread. It lived up to the joy of the first time that I read this book. There's the worry of overhyping something for yourself. I'm glad to report that I did not do that with this book. If you are interested in fantasy, in northern folk and fairy stories, in specifically Russian fairy stories and folk tale, I would definitely recommend The Bear and the Nightingale. So I finished that at the very beginning of May and I gave it five out of five stars and that was a reread. The next book that I picked up was on audio from the library through Libby and that was a pho love story by Lone Lee. So Lee is a Vietnamese American young adult author and I picked her up because May was Asian Heritage Month with Cindy had created this Asian readathon. It almost reminds me of Romeo and Juliet, like you have these two young people whose family run restaurants there that are at odds with each other and they're not allowed to be friends and there's this like big family secret about what drove them apart, like what caused this conflict. And of course, Bao and Lin begin working together on the school paper with this food article project. And they fall in love and start secretly dating. And of course, the family eventually finds out because it's Romeo and Juliet and we need some drama. <laughs> so if you are looking for something light and fluffy, I would recommend picking this up. I mean, for being something so predictable, <laughs> I thought it was still really fun. I gave it a three out of five stars. And like I mentioned, I borrowed that from the library. The next book that I read is The Strange Library by Haruki Murakami. I have the US version where the art is by Chip Kidd. And this is the English translation by Ted Goosen. And this is a bizarre little story about a boy who goes to the library to have a question answered and ends up being taken advantage of by an old man and trapped in a jail cell in the library. And it's him working to escape. I read this for the patron live show that happened at the end of this month. Discussing it was so much fun. This is actually something that I've read twice this month. So I read this as a new buy for that book club. I ended up rereading it this month. I actually lowered my rating. Like the first time it was just sort of like spectacle. And then when I started thinking about it, I ended up lowering it from a five star to a four star. Uh, not quite perfection, but still a really enjoyable read. I would highly recommend reading this with a book club. The thing to keep in mind is that this is children's literature. And if you look at the illustrations for this in its Japanese printing, it looks like children's literature. Like the drawings are cartoonish. They depict what's happening in the story. Whereas once you move into the English translations, both the UK and the US editions, which we compared in the patron book club, are very um, open to interpretation, like not at all depicting what is happening in the story. They're more like uh, accompanying it, offering an additional piece to analyze. So I found this fascinating. Like there were so many things to discuss with this. What is the message of this? If it is children's literature, like children's literature is always didactic. So is the message here to fear strangers, to stand up for yourself? Because if the boy had just said no to begin with, he wouldn't have got himself in the predicament that he got himself into. If you haven't read it and you like sort of the dark, grim fairy tales that are kind of unsettling, deeply disturbing, I would recommend checking out this 
children's novella. If you're looking for a book club read where I feel like everybody's gonna come with something different um, and it's gonna feed very fruitful discussion, this could be such a good book club piece. I both read and reread that this month. It was a new buy initially and then a reread and it went from a five star to a four star between the initial read and the reread. Then I read Broken in the Best Possible Way by Jenny Lawson. So Jenny Lawson wrote Furiously Happy which made its rounds on booktube a while ago and she also wrote Let's Pretend This Never Happened, which they're all very comedic memoir pieces. She has a very dry sense of humor. Her father was um, a taxidermist, and so Let's Pretend This Never Happened was about the odd experiences of growing up as the child of somebody who, like, collects roadkill and stuffs them and poses them and dresses them. This is entirely looking at her issues with mental health and disability. So she deals with depression and anxiety and a whole host of other things that sort of interlock with that. It talks about the frustrations of like memory loss and brain fog and how shitty insurance, medical insurance in the States is, how frustrating that is when you find a drug that works for you, but then it isn't covered by the insurance company that you've been paying into forever that's supposed to cover this thing. It is both hilarious and heartbreaking. And like, I laughed out loud reading this book. So it was a new buy last month or two months ago. When did I pick this up? Yeah, this was an impulse buy in April, but I am glad I picked it up. I deeply enjoyed reading this and if you deal at all with mental health issues or maybe you know someone with some mental health issues, specifically depression and anxiety, this might be interesting for you to read for like that connecting piece. Um, if you want to sort of understand more the headspace of a loved one with some mental health struggles um, or if you have those struggles yourself and you just want to connect with another human and relate to another human, also good. I gave that three to five stars because it's not my favorite. Um, I think I enjoyed Let's Pretend This Never Happened more than this one. When you've read more than one thing by an author, you sort of have to put their works on a sliding scale, or at least I put their works on a sliding scale. So like, if Let's Pretend This Never Happened is a four star read, then this is a three star read for me, right? The next thing that I read was A Struggle to Get Through, and this is Middle Grade. This is The Night Parade by Catherine Tanguary. So this is for Asian Heritage Month. Tanguary is an American born human with Japanese ancestry who now lives and works in Tokyo. So this is published in English to begin with. I picked this up a while ago, like a long time ago, because it gave me Studio Ghibli vibes. And I would say that's very much true. It's like if Alice in Wonderland met The Christmas Carol meets Spirited Away meets Totoro. And I'm not entirely sure that it works. There's a lot of things left hanging, a lot of questions. At times it was just almost too, too nonsensical, like in the way that Alice in Wonderland is sort of nonsense children's literature. At times this felt too nonsensical and I was struggling to make sense of it and it actually took me a really long time to make it through middle grade. Like this is meant for nine to 12 year olds. It's supposed to be easy reading and it was a challenge and I thought I was going to love it, but in the end it just wasn't satisfying. And I think one of the biggest things that is left hanging is that she, she has decided to screw over the queen bee of her clique while she's away on vacation at her grandmother's house for a traditional ceremony. They clean the graves, there are festivals around the dead, remembering the dead, and so she is away from Tokyo, she's in the countryside, she's on a mountain, she doesn't have cell service, and she's participating in all of these like cultural traditions that she doesn't super believe in, and ends up getting a curse put on herself because she doesn't show the proper respects to the spirits. And so the like magical plot of the novel is about her her getting this curse put off her, but in between you see her becoming more aware that her clique of friends are really shitty and she makes a friend while at her grandmother's house and the thing is at the end of the novel 
they go home and she screwed over her friend group in Tokyo. They are not planning on visiting the mountain with her new friend for another two years because they only visit the grandmother every other summer. It's been hinted at the, that the grandmother is like terminally ill and that's why it was important for them to especially come for this ceremony and to like help her clean out her house and manage the house because she's dying. Also there were these magic marbles and the magic marbles are like the deus ex machina in every dreamscape experience and then they disappear. I was expecting those marbles to come back as like a proof that this happened. Like she has this little bag of marbles as like a it wasn't all a dream, but they just disappear. Where did the fucking marbles go? In the end, it just ended up feeling like a mess and I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. So I gave this two out of five stars uh, and this did come from my TBR and this has been sitting on my TBR since I think I first started working at Indigo. I always looked at it as this like magical escapist thing that it wasn't the right time for and I didn't end up liking it at all when I decided to pick it up now. So that was disappointing. After that disappointment, decided to reread Alone of the First Adventure by Tamara Pierce. I have talked about this many times on this channel. This is one of my favorite pieces of children's literature. It is a novel that shaped me. I read it earlier this year actually for the patron exclusive book club. I believe for January. It was the book for January that we talked about in February. I'm not going to talk about it again now because I have a little something planned for this. Just know that this is the the umpteenth time that this has been reread, uh, reread with especially critical eyes this time, but enjoyed nonetheless. Like you can enjoy and be critical of your old faves. Like you can have problematic faves and acknowledge that these texts aren't perfect at the same time that they are deeply nostalgic and that you you love them. That is okay. Then I read Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. So this is a really cute queer graphic novel. Alice Oseman, her characters are, they almost remind me of like Sally Rooney vibes, like sort of complex people-y books but for teens, like without the graphic normal people sex. Alice Oseman feels like Sally Rooney for teens. And so this is the story of Charlie and Nick. I can't really tell you what happens here because it's going to spoil the first novel. Charlie is out and queer and he's in his all boys school and he's very much made fun of for being out and queer. And Nick sort of takes him under his wing and befriends him. They end up on the rugby team together and they form a very deep friendship. And this is the continuation of that. It's a delight. I have read quite a few things by Alice Oseman now. I think I've read all of her novels and I have one novella left that's about Nick and Charlie. I mean, there've been hits and misses within her body of works for me. I'm excited to continue on with volume three and four. So I gave that four out of five stars. It was a new buy. That is the last thing that I read because the last thing that I'm going to share with you is a DNF. And that is The Mysterious Mr. Quinn by Agatha Christie. So I have recently filmed reacting to my first ever book haul. So in my first ever book haul, I hauled this book because I recognized the name Agatha Christie after reading and then there were none and I found two Agatha Christie books and snapped them up. And then I reacted to that haul and these were the books that were left. I talked about what was left. And then I filmed a try a chapter tag where I tried a chapter of all of those books, including The Mysterious Mr. Quinn. Now the first story had me intrigued. I didn't realize that this was a short story collection where Mr. Quinn was going to randomly show up throughout all of them. And it seems that from the ones that I've read before deciding to DNF, that Mr. Quinn just happens to show up in all of these places and ask questions about cold mysteries. And the idea is that with the distance of time, you will look at these things differently without emotion, like without the charge of emotion. And I didn't really like any of them. Like I think I read five or six and I think there are 10 in here. 12. There are 12. So I read like half of them and I wasn't enjoying this and so I have decided to DNF this and just start on something 
fun that I am going to enjoy a lot more than this. That is my May reading wrap-up. Let me know your thoughts on these books in the comments down below. Have you read any of these? Did you really enjoy any of these or dislike any of these? I would love to hear from you. The patron drop-in book club for June is Bailey's Cafe by Gloria Naylor. This is about a supernatural cafe where customers are coming through the entrances from various wheres and whens, which is especially exciting because this month we're also reading, if you're following along with the Dark Tower, Journey to the Tower patron um, book club, we're still reading the Dark Tower series. We're almost approaching the end of the Dark Tower series, but the Dark Tower is about various wheres and whens overlapping in a certain point, and so it's kind of fun to see another book, another piece of writing that has this idea of the various wheres and whens and people coming from different times and places and there's this like one touchstone point, this one keystone point, um, and in this case it's the cafe. So I'm very much excited for this. If you are interested in becoming a patron, in tipping me for producing these videos, the link to the Patreon page is in the description box down below. Before we go, we do have to thank patrons who make these videos possible, who allow me to set aside time to produce this content. So thank you so much for your support. It means a lot. I hope you are all staying safe, that you are doing well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.